long ago the Dena'ina children were led from their homes, brought out into a secluded forest, and taught about the resources and skills they needed to survive. Not just physically, but culturally and artistically as well. In June 2010, the Dena'ina children gathered at Spirit Lake to continue this tradition. In this five-day life-impacting experience, these youth learned about the great cultural and artistic values as several Alaskan Native instructors shared their art and knowledge. At the Kanaitsi Art Camp, Kadidichicht, the place where you will create something, the students will work on many projects involving Alaskan Native art. The elements of art and the principles of design were woven into the lessons. We learned about drawing from memory and from observation to create a still life. After listening to the storytellers, images of a story were completed. As our projects were created, we learned about critiquing or giving an opinion about a work of art. The ulu is sharp. I'm serious. It really is. At Knightsy Art Camp, we made ulus out of old saw blades. Alan Dick and Doug Gates showed us how to make them look 100%. Ulus are used for cutting various items, such as fish, meat, fruits and veggies. We first drew a ulu pattern on an old saw blade, then chiseled the saw so it looked like an ulu. We persuaded the saw blade metal and convinced it to become an ulu. And then we ground the metal so the ulu would be sharp and efficient. After boring holes in the metal to make the ulu look like it was from a saw, we cut the wood to fit our hand size so it would fit the blade, then sanded the wood for a softer appearance. We used epoxy on the blade to connect the handle to the ulu. Waiting some time, we finally had our finished ulus. Many Alaskans keep the traditions alive by making the sharp ulus like we did at art camp. So, what do you know about Devil's Club? At first, I knew that Devil's Club was prickly and poisonous. George Hawley, one of our teachers, brought Devil's Club and leather gloves to camp. Devil's Club can be used for medicine, creams, tea, beads, and drumsticks. You scrape Devil's Club until we got to the green bark. Then we peeled the green bark to reveal the wood. The remainder of the wood will be made into drumsticks. Beading is not just making necklaces. Beading is traditional, decorative, and religious. Beaded art was once used as a form of commerce, gifts, and trade. If you want to make a necklace or bracelet, you need a piece of sinew. When your beadwork is complete, you can wear it with pride or give it as a gift. You know, the thought of no technology is pretty scary. At camp, we weren't allowed to have our phones and electronics. I thought I'd lose everything until we saw the camera. Our good friend Paul brought his camera with him to teach us filming. To start this fine project, we had to hook the camera to a film crane, or as I like to call it, the disco stick of filming. To use it for filming, you can rotate the camera for a pan effect. To view from above, just look down, pull the lever. Wow! Focusing is done with a push of a button, and zooming in is the lift of a switch. We filmed all our projects. We got to, you guessed it, work with more programs, switches, levers, buttons to edit all our film ideas into a movie.
Everybody likes something about rhythm. Even your heartbeat has a rhythm. Danita Hensley stopped by and taught us all how to make drums. After making our drums, mandalas or circle art were created. Danita keeps the drumming alive, just like how her uncle, Peter Kalifornsky, kept the Denaini language from dying. Vaidi, a Kanaitsi employee who works with children, would stop by camp in the evenings with her big drum. I found it very exciting to be sitting in a drumming circle and singing along. It makes me feel better to be listening to the calming beat of the drums. This year at art camp, a very special guest, Helen Dick, helped us make one-of-a-kind birch bark baskets. One of the first things she told us to do was find the supplies needed. We gathered spruce root, birch bark, and willow branches from the forest around us. We used smoke and heat to help us fold the birch. Then comes the hard part, threading the split spruce root through the edges to hold the whole thing together. We made the baskets, not just to make them, but for the knowledge that would last the rest of our lives, and so we could pass that knowledge down through the generations. Special thanks to our friend and elder, Helen Dick. Storytelling is like entertainment, learning, and about a life experience. Maggie Jones and George Holly are both great storytellers. At camp, they told two different types of stories. George Holly told a true story of what happened in his life, and Maggie Jones told legends from Denina history. Maggie's story was about the raven and the half-human. It was very funny, especially how she expressed different voices to represent the characters. As an art lesson, we were asked to illustrate a story. One camper drew a half-human, half-serpent. Another drew the bronze angel. George Hawley's story took place in his house. He was reading a book. As he looked up at this exact moment, one of his mother's favorite angels, which was usually silver, was bronze. This story, told from his heart, reflected a miracle and seemed to be the presence of his mother, who had recently passed. Both stories left us with a lasting impression. In this five-day, life-impacting experience, these youth learned about the great cultural and artistic values. I would not say, you know you'd see it there, hoods just on. Go half and come tartly, and see the dark of hell on the blue. If he who let hold on, on the hood the look of the stone. Yet not a a tonic, 
אני שום הגילאך עדרי Mountain top is where you'll find. 